Hello everyone. This is Alicia, uh, Dame of the Brush, I suppose. And what I'm going to try and do for you right now is uh, show you how I'm going to paint these dire wolves here. Now, when I got them, they were in a box. I had to put them together and prime them myself. And what I've done here is after I've primed them, I've just dry brushed a little bit of Raycarth flesh over all of it except for all the fur. Because the way these guys work is uh, this is just bare rotting skin and then the hair is all the fur that's on. Now after I've done now that I've done this what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some pallid witch flesh I'm going to shake it up and I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush not exactly you know a real great brush because what I'm going to do with the right with the pallid witch flesh is I'm actually going to wipe I'm going to get through this right here I'm actually going to wipe a good amount of it off my brush and then go over the muscle tissue with it now I know you're wondering you know why why are you making the muscle tissue this kind of white color? Doesn't make any sense. Well, just hang with me a little longer and it will make sense. Now, I am getting some of it on the bone and that's a big boo boo, but right now we're not really in the detail phase, so it's okay. and I'm not wanting to put it on there too thick because I want the musculature lines in the model to show through alright now I'm just gonna cut the feet and when we come back to this uh, I should have all that done. Alright, now I apologize for the first part of this. I did not realize how much my ha big old hand was in the way. This is my first one, so I, I will get better, I hope. So, now you can't... I've gotten all of the muscle pulled out with the Pallid Witch Flesh. Now, I bet you're wondering why Bob, why didn't you just do the Pallid Witch Flesh in the first place? Well, the reason why I dry brushed the Ricarth Flesh on there first was because the Ricarth Flesh is a base and the Pallid Witch Flesh is a layer, so it's a lot thinner and it's a whole lot harder to put on. And I'd have to put on a whole lot more than what I really want to put on this thing. Uh, if I didn't coat it a little bit with the Raycar flesh first. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Utami Bone and I'm going to put it on this the uh, the skin parts. Now I know it sounds a little weird putting bone on skin but I'm copying a uh, pat somebody else's paint scheme and that's what that's what I've come up with to match it so I just brush just a little bit on there and I apologize because you can't really tell much of a difference because these shades are all super close together but I guarantee you um, that in real life you can tell you can tell a difference and I'm gonna try not to get my big old hand here in the the way so 
so I just kind of pull out the patches of skin with a little bit of this utabi bone. That's a name that comes from, I believe, Tomb Kings, but don't. Okay, I think I'm getting my hand in the way again here. It's very difficult to get this, my hand not in the shot, unfortunately, because I don't have a very good setup. I'm just, just me and my iPad right here, trying to do this. So I'm gonna cut the feet again, and because you get the idea, I'm, I'm lightly doing the the utabi bone here. All right, so we've got the utabi bone on the skin now. So it's a little bit more yellow than the rest of it. I know it's hard to tell from the camera. I apologize. Um, now we're going to go back with the Raycarth, the Raycarth flesh again and clean up where I rubbed over the, the bones because, with the uh, pile of witch flesh. And basically we're just going to pull the bones back out with the, the Raycarth. Real easy. Um, again, we're not just dumping paint on them. We're just going to do it real kind of light. And the reason for this is we're going to use the uh, the natural primer. The natural black of the primer to kind of give a little bit of extra added shading so it's just enough not a lot but just kinda go back in and pull out what's bone and what's not alright so we've got all the bone picked out again now we get to put some actual color on this thing yay I get to add some color all right, what we're going to do is we're going to use Drink and Hop Nightshade, and we're going to put that on the muscle. I'm going to use a nice little detail brush, kind of like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Something to kind of help control the, the wash, because that's the name of the game with this, control. Because you don't want to get the blue everywhere. You just want to get it on those muscle groups, and that's it. And you don't want to just glob it on, either. It's just something that's very light, lightly done. Okay, darker than that. And you want to put it on lightly because we're actually going to be washing this a couple of times. And I'm sure you're going, we're going to wash this a couple of times. Why aren't we just putting a whole bunch on it now? and not have to wash it a whole bunch of different times. Well, because the color's not quite Dragonhoff Nightshade by itself. So in order to get the muscles looking exactly how I need them to look, it requires more than one wash. So we just get in there, get all the muscle groups really good. Uh, the other thing that I didn't point out before when I did the Pallid Witch Flesh was the ear. The ear needs to be the Pallid Witch Flesh as well, and the ear also gets the blue wash. I don't know. If you're going to copy this, you don't have to do the ear the blue wash. You could even do it this, the, the same color with the rest of the running skin, which I think think would probably have been a might have been a better option but I'm not going to nitpick too much on somebody else's scheme because you know that was the choice that they made when they decided to paint them and I'm not going to to wreck up the scheme because these guys need to fit with the rest of them so there you have it. Alright, so we're waiting for the Dragonhoff Nightshade to dry on the Direwolf. I'm going to 
tell you a little bit about the base because the base is part of this. I'm trying something new. I'm going to try and do bases for the guy. Now, what I've done is I bought a little bit. I say a little bit. That's a, that's a little bit of uh, this fine basing grit. It comes from I think this is Gale Force Nine. What I've done is I sprinkled some of this on the base, and uh, well, I put down glue first, duh, and then I sprinkled a little bit on the base, and then I primered it. So now all that nice grit is black and ready to paint. So in order to get it to the color of the basing that was presented to me, I'm going to use some steel huge and drab. And a cruddy little brush, a cruddy brush. Now I'm not going to dunk all of it in there, but what I'm going to do is this, and that will allow the Steel Legion drab to get in there. As I'm going to give my camera fits. Not in there completely to like cover the black because, you know, I want a little bit of that black showing to give, again, some shadow, some kind of shadowy effect. But just kind of dot it all in there. real good. And I'm not going to care about getting it in the center area here because that's where All right, there we go. That's where the the figure's going to sit. So it doesn't matter if there a little bit gets in there too. So da 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 da. da. Very tedious and if you're going to do it like this, don't pick a brush that you like. Pick a brush that for all intensive purposes is crud. I mean, because look at that tip. That's all. Because <clears throat> when you're doing this, some of the little grit's going to come off, it's going to get stuck to your brush, it's going to do this, do that. But, so we finished getting all worked in there like that. We just dot 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 dot. So now we got it kind of covered. With the Steel Legion. And don't feel bad if yours doesn't come out exactly like mine. I'm not, I can't get them exactly the same either, so don't worry about it. <coughs> so, now that we got that covered with the Steel Legion, uh, we're going to pull out some Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to wash my brush off, because even though it's a cruddy brush, Still need to clean it because I need it for cruddy rush tasks. Alright, now instead of doing the dab, 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 dab that we just did, we're going to wipe a good amount of this off the brush because we don't want too much on the brush. And then we're going to just kind of rub it across. the stones because this will give us our first kind of highlight effect.
And again, it's a little harder to tell from the camera what it looks like. In real life, you can tell there's a, there's a there's a difference. It's gotten a little bit brighter. Okay. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. All right. Now that it's dried a little bit, what we're going to do next is we're going to take some of this Screaming Skull. And we're going to just lightly brush it over the stones, too. And what this is just going to do is just going to give some contrast to kind of so people can see. That there are rocks there. It's all dirty, kind of gravelly looking. See? Looks totally different now that it's gotten popped out. Alright, so that's the base for right now. We'll get back to it later with the with the grass. But for right now, until the mini's done, it's done. Alright, now that the Dragonhoff Nightshade has dried, you can see that the, the muscle groups have a nice pretty blue tint to them. And you can actually tell them apart from the rest of the stuff. Alright. So, next we're going to just leave the muscle groups for now. And we're going to pull out our Seraphim Sepia. And we're going to do a very light wash on all of the skin. And what this is going to do, because we're not going to put a whole lot on the skin, it's going to help it look to be kind of old and dirty and kind of yellowed, kind of nasty looking skin without getting into, you know, the Nurgle rot or anything like that. See, just real super light. It's not a whole lot of color added to it. basically just putting just a very very little bit on here because we don't want it to change the color the Utabi bone color too much but just enough to give kind of a nice shading coat here. Alright, now in sharp contrast to how lightly we put on the the wash on the skin, we're actually going to do a more normal type wash on the bones. But Leisha, that's going to make them all brown! I know. But we're going to do some more stuff to the bones after this is dried, so don't worry about it. Just trust me on it. See, and you want to get some good coverage there in the cracks in like the feet. See? because those cracks in the feet are going to help us really tell each individual bone out here because a lot of these bones are you know they're by themselves sticking out of muscle and don't forget the ribs because the rib cage is important too Let's see we got muscle groups kind of sticking on those particular ribs in there and see how the crotch is all nice and joined together there all the paints in there do it I know you don't see a whole lot of it and all that but that is the exact reason why you don't see the base on the figure yet <coughs> and 
I'm sure if Vince watches this, he's probably screaming at me the whole time. You're touching the model. No. Well, I haven't got my sticky tack yet. I'm sorry. I will get around to probably doing that sticky tack stuff. But for right now, the this is what I have to do. And I don't have any other real option here. But as you can see, I'm touching just where the primer is and on the base where the primer is. I'm not touching the rest of the figure right now. I'm trying very hard not to touch the figure at all. And I just moved my camera. Bump. All right. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing with the bone. Okay. So now that we've got those washes all dry, we're going to do another wash. Drizzy Violet. And that's going to go lightly on the muscle groups, just like the blue did. It's just enough to kind of give that kind of purple tint to the blue muscle that we've got. Alright, now that the uh, purple has dried just a little bit, and that was Drucci Violet, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Terminus Stone, and we're going to rub this dry, this dry paint because it's made for dry brushing. I know it's kind of weird, isn't it? Um, just a little bit on the skin and just a little bit on the bones too. Now the Termina Stone, it's kind of similar to Uh, probably, it's close to pallid, but not quite. It's a little bit more yellow than pallid. So if you're trying, so if you don't have the dry paints, I mean, that's fine. You can use probably one of those, and it'll work. But, so I'm going to start getting this kind of rubbed on, and then we'll be back. All right, now that you got the termitus stone dry brushed on the skin and the bone, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some of this Mechanicus Standard Gray. It's a base. And we're going to kind of brush this onto the fur. Okay, now I'm going to move my fat all hand. And what I'm trying to do here is we're not going to get the base down in the cracks. We're going to leave we're going to leave those nice black cracks so that everybody can see all of the the sculptor's work here, the individual hairs and everything. And we're going to go over the mane up here, the tail, and the little butt hair back here. Okay? Okay. Nearly home free. Now, we've got the gray in here. If we can get this to focus correctly.